Brad Munkow. Matthew Fink. There it is. You still got that thing on the table, dude. That's my thing. It's not your thing. It's not your business. All right, dude. It's your thing. Do what you want to do now. But uh, we just did a whole interview <laughs> with that on the table. We did. You yes. really plug it? You, how Do you know the name of the company yet? No. <laughs> You're really messing up this endorsement deal we go with, had with Mountain I think it's slides. It might be Black Mountain. Black Mountain? Yeah. It, they're really cool, though. It's very cool. Uh, Sponsorship. Um, yeah, hey, everybody. Listen, we are listening to the Mink and the Monk. I'm Brad Monkel. This guy over here is... I'm Matt Fink. Yep. We're really, we're really nailing these intros down. We really got a formula here. There it is. And we just finished talking to uh, the great Danny Lewis. That was a hell of an interview. Yeah, he was a lot of fun to talk to. A lot of fun. Really interesting uh, individual. A lot of really... We covered a lot of ground. His time in Government Mule. Um playing with John Schofield and talking about that experience growing up in the Catskills um playing yeah. with uh with uh talked a little bit about the Almond brothers briefly but he, he was talking a lot about uh, Well he was in Greg Almond's band Conquer. he said the, yeah. I think that was Oh the, it wasn't Almond brothers it was Greg Almond Greg Almond okay, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, and, and and his tenure with uh uh, Joe Cocker. Yeah. Yeah. That was amazing. We got we got to I think we got to the heart of the issue. Yeah. There was yeah. a lot of good stuff there. That's our next episode coming out after this one. Uh, but that was a long interview, man. I'm fried. I'm fr- I'm a li- <laughs> Yeah, I'm a little bit fried too. I didn't realize it until we stopped. You know, and I was like, "Oh, I feel like I've had too much coffee, which is definitely the case." Uh today, I think we've had, I don't I don't I stopped counting. You know? I was worse yesterday. I was after we recorded it yesterday, I was like, yeah, jittering a bit. You reached that point. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, we got Danny in the can. That'll be out to you subscribers in um, what about a week, probably a week and a half, maybe. Um, yeah, week, week and a half. Yeah. And then we got some, uh, we got Scott Petito on deck. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Be the next interview. Scott coming up and then... Uh, you know, uh, once again, mink and the monk at Gmail. If you have any questions for our future guests, I don't think we had any for Danny. I did. I checked the email yesterday, but not today. We probably didn't. We we're covered still, a lot, still, though. Oh yeah, no, we're we fine. We lot. have yeah. the questions. You guys could pull your weight around here. Yeah, something. But yeah, that was a fascinating uh, journey that we went on. Yeah, you know, his career. Uh, when he was saying playing professionally, I think the better part of fifty years. But he had been playing since the time he was. Uh, I mean, as far as he can remember, he's always been having banging on something or uh, playing some sort of musical instrument. So he's a fascinating individual. Yeah, yeah. Doug, what he had to say about, I guess, like being a composer and arranger and how he kind of used all the instruments and talking about improv and stuff. That was cool. Yeah. And what was important to him as far as remaining true to what he wanted to do, which was make music with people he cared about making music with, which is, you know, to to, to be on the other side of of uh of a 50 year career and looking back and being uh, being in the perfect place that you could be that's the that's an astounding achievement so and uh, it's a testament to who Danny is and and uh musically as both musically and um just as a person yeah yeah it was cool it was a good time yeah um and uh yeah uh, I'm looking forward to dropping that. So we got Scott coming up, and then we'll be talking to, uh, to uh, you know, Ira Coleman, Mike Clark, Sue, and Arnold McCuller. Yep. Um, we got a lot of good stuff coming up. So, you know, if you have questions for them, if you have questions for us, you know, at some point we're going to get like a Patreon or something going. Right, something. Matt? Maybe something educational. We're not going to get super deep into like, we get a little nerdy in these interviews, but like we won't go crazy. We're not going to go out of our way to be nerds but if you have a question about music we'll we'll talk about it it doesn't have to be about music it can be about anything yeah but you're saying we're gonna go into we're gonna we're gonna start talking about like lydian dominant chords and that kind of thing is that what you mean sure i mean okay Le- liam davis talks about those too much to me Shout he did like liam those <laughs> yeah he talks about it too much <laughs> i just want to strangle he, he did like you. that sound yeah i forgot about that <laughs> Yeah. What else? Is that enough? You You'll probably uh, have a question about it. I Liam, mean, yeah, tell Liam to write us. Yeah. Don't call us. I mean, that's probably enough. We're, we're I know we're both fried. Hey dude, how come how come I haven't met your your wife yet? Does she have a problem with Ginger's man? Yes. 
Next question. If anybody else has a question. No, um, not Ginger's as much as she... I'm just guessing she doesn't like you. She hasn't met me yet. That's the kind of effect you I'm have on charming. people. It's a preemptive hatred. When you like get in the neighborhood, people start to be like, I feel hateful. I, I, do, I do feel watched here on, you your, should. on your street. Yeah. <laughs> There's <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it's got a vibe. But listen, dude, I'm charming. Okay. I guess. I mean, if that's what you have to say to yourself to get through the day, but I, I'm going to disagree. Dude. You look like a homeless librarian. <laughs> oh, you were back to the homeless librarian. Okay. <laughs> you are watched though in the area. You're charming, I guess, <laughs> the way, the way, uh, maybe the way Frankenstein was, you know? I, I, hey, he's cute. No doubt. I mean, you, ha I mean. He's just misunderstood. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that's the vibe. I'm so you're misunderstood so that people don't understand. I feel I have a good grasp of you and I'm. Mostly your wife. My wife has a very good grasp of you. That's why she's, you've never met her. Yeah, I knew her and I were going to have a problem. Anyways, this has been The Mink and the Monk. The Mink and the Monk. Signing off. We'll see you next week. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>